really excited to have you on. Uh, thanks for joining us. Hey, pleasure. Good to be here. Do you want to just introduce yourself a little bit uh, to everyone uh, here today? Yeah, sure. Well, firstly, Liam, thanks for having me on. It's, it's, it really is a pleasure. Um, sounds like you've got some great content going out today. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Ben. I'm based out uh, in the UK. Um, I'm the founder of Missing Letter, which is a um, social media automation tool for the people that blog or companies that blog. Um, but more recently, I'm also the founder of a brand new summit platform called Hey Summit. And it all started um, about 18 months ago when we decided to put on, as you mentioned, a 100 speaker summit. And it's kind of been a whirlwind since then. We've learned a ton, um, but crucially, we ended up building a platform to, to enable us to deliver that. So um, very firmly entrenched in the, in the summit world now. And um, it's, it's really fascinating. There's a, we're just getting started. So how long ago did you run that first summit that kicked this all off? So it was a, it was about fourteen months ago ish, um, or when we started the process, I should say. Um, the, the, the the summit itself was was a few weeks after that, um, and yeah, it, it, as with anything, you know, it started out as a as a basic marketing idea. Hey, let's see if we can put on some awesome content for our customers. Um, it was we were drawing into the summer, and so we we knew that look, sales would be slowing down, or sort of the sort of the more obvious promotions. Um, people would be going, dipping in and out of work, going on holiday. So let's just give them some free content. Let's maybe pull in one or two people that we know are experts in their fields that are just up for doing a, you know, a one-off webinar or, or, or a little sort of fireside chat or something that would just be kind of engaging for our audience. And that's how it started. Then I slept, woke up the next morning and um, kind of was very clear to me that I could do that, but really... You know, when we, you know, when we, if we draw this back to, to summits and why we put them on, it, it is at the very essence, you know, it's there to drive business. It's there to garner interest and, and um, it is a marketing channel. And so with that kind of firmly in my mind, um, it was clear to me that doing a one-off talk was just going to be a bit boring and really wasn't going to um, interest in, 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 you know, from sponsors as well as, you know, from, from our attendees. And so it very quickly escalated to a 100 speaker summit um, in ambition in terms of what we were hoping to achieve. And, and amazingly, we did that. So the next sort of six weeks, sort of six to eight weeks were, were spent intensely focused on doing just that. But what was really, really interesting and kind of made it that much more of a complex, time consuming, hair lost, uh, hair losing sort of experience. I did have a bit of hair before that, maybe. Maybe not, that's, that's wishful thinking actually. Um, was the fact that we very, very early on, not only decided to put on an event of that, of that magnitude, but we also decided to build the platform that would enable us to do that because something dawned on me very, very early on in planning this out was that even if we were doing a small summit, but certainly if we're doing a big one, the, the quality of the presentation, the, the fluidity, the, the, the joined upness of the brand, the, the, the presentation, the experience for the attendees, having all of that done in a way that for me felt like it would correctly and justly represent our brand and not just feel like a kind of, forced on addendum to some random WordPress plugin that we'd sort of bolstered on and said, hey, we're doing some content. That for me wasn't consistent with our brand and our you know, ethos and, and, and personality within our company. And so, um, yeah, we took a very early decision to actually build a platform from scratch that would enable us to um, deliver a, 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 an event of that sort of size and quality. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. And we sort of went on this crazy journey um, and, and, and most importantly, we put on the event first and foremost. It wasn't, you know, uh, it, it, we weren't distracted too much by the platform. We had to sort of balance the two things out. But we amazingly did put on a, an event of that size and learned a hell of a lot in, in doing so. Well, this is really interesting uh, from your, you coming on here, uh, looking to, you know, talk where you talked about why you started the, the summit, why you wanted to do one, uh, because you didn't want to just do just that one person uh, speaker kind of uh, webinar, if you like, uh, and you wanted that big expose. Uh, and you've, because of how you went through that process, you decided to commit to creating a company that's dedicated to helping other people create summits. Uh, and do you want to just talk on like, I mean, that's a, that's a big, bold move, right? Uh, people here that are listening are just considering doing a summit. Here you are creating a whole company around 
the idea of virtual summits. Why have you decided to start uh, a company dedicated to virtual summits? Like why, why, what makes you so excited about the virtual summit that you've gone and done this? Yeah, good question. Um, partially, um, I'm a little bit mad, so that kind of helps, I think. Having that insane sort of streak of, of that determination to, 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 to succeed is, is, is a good ingredient to start with. But all, all, in all seriousness, um, there is a need. There is, there is a growing demand we've seen um, over the last few years, and you'll know this better, better than I, in, in the summit space. It's becoming a hugely powerful channel for companies, small and large, to, to get in front of key people, to um, be seen as authorities in their space, and to really create meaningful connections through the content that they're delivering, um, both in a marketing sense, but also crucially in a, in a revenue sense as well. Um, and in fact, you know, just as a side off, you know, offshoot, we're seeing many of our customers create businesses purely based on our platform that they are literally now able to deliver a summit a month and they're making 10, 20, 30 K just from sponsorship. They haven't even started charging for the, for the content yet. Um, so it, it, just from the market opportunity standpoint, we've seen a massive opportunity here. And then when you, when you sort of marry that up with, with the reality or certainly the reality of the marketplace kind of this time last year, um, there was nothing really out there that would enable us to deliver summits in the way that we felt summits should be delivered. As I said, with that sort of joined up sort of focus on quality, presentation, experience, revenue generation opportunities, virality, all those sorts of things. Um, and I just remember my eyes bleeding sort of as I was reading, doing some research on, on, on the web and reading these 5,000 plus word um, blog posts on all these various random things that you would in theory put together in order to deliver a, um, a, a summit. And this was just for a five or 10 person summit. You know, they were talking about all these different bits of technology. Um, you know, this, this WordPress plugin, then this sort of technology over there, then this mail uh, provider over here, this CRM, piece them all together. Then you pay five grand to get a designer, then 10 grand for a developer. And at the end of it, if you haven't, you know, <laughs> lost all, all, all will to live, you, you have something that you can then deliver a summit um, uh, against. And that just didn't feel right. Uh, it didn't feel there was a product serving the demand that we were seeing ra really ranking up uh, at that time. And so really for that reason, we um, thought it, it was a perfect opportunity. We needed it. We felt there was going to be a greater need moving forwards and uh, we, we stuck to it. Sorry, mate. Uh, Sarah was just talking to me in the background here <laughs> doing, right. doing stuff. Um, so you're a little bit mad we've 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 got that but uh you've, you've created right amounts that, right i mean let's just not get carried away yeah well <laughs> mad mad scientist maybe because uh what, what you've built is uh pretty incredible to make things uh easy for summer hosts because i mean we, when we ran our first summit uh we tied together 18 uh different tools to, to make that work and you know you talked now about how people uh, are throwing together so much really quickly now just off the back of getting sponsorship. And, and Tom, our last guest, was talking about the two main revenue generators of uh, a virtual summit really are your uh, ticket sales, your selling your all access pass and your, your sponsorship as well. And I've had, I've had quite a bit of experience uh, selling sponsorships uh, in the physical events, conferences, as well as my, my own virtual summits and I've sold to big um, corporates, banks, finance organizations, uh, currency trading, uh, what else, uh, logistics, uh, Vimeo. Vimeo was uh, a sponsor of uh, one of our summits and ended up coming on and sponsoring the next 12 months worth of our summits because of the success and how well the campaign performed, <laughs> which, which, which is really, really cool. Have you had any feedback from you know, these people who are, who are running their summits uh, and getting, getting sponsors and how that's, uh, how effective that's been? Yeah, very much so. And as I said, we, we have multiple customers making tens of thousands of dollars a month just on sponsorships alone. But what's interesting is that we're seeing two different, two distinct strategies, if you will, that, that are playing out in terms of how um, sponsors are, are, are sort of factored into their overall summit sort of uh, rollout strategy, if you will. The one is the most obvious, which is, hey, we're putting on a summit. Um, we've got, you know, X amount of people signed up as attendees or we're, we're predicting that many if it's early stage. Uh, we've got 50 speakers and we're doing it on this subject matter. You've got it already. It's a nice little packaged up. It looks beautiful because it's through our platform. And then you can go and 
put yourself in front of those potential sponsors and say, hey, look, would you like to get in front of this, this audience? That's one strategy. That's the more traditional, I suppose, and that's working really, really well. But what's really fascinating is that we're seeing a lot of um, uh, our, our customers do the, the, the opposite almost. They're, they're going to sponsors that they know have money, that, that, that are already spending money on, in most cases, physical events as well, in, in, in the tune of hundreds of thousands, and saying, look, continue doing that. That's, an, that's a meaningful part of your strategy. We can see that. But hey, look, what if we were to put on a, a, um, an online summit that was much more hyper-focused around a particular subject matter that you guys care about, that is true to your, um, your brand and everything else? Um, what would you then be interested in a very basic sense and we're seeing the sponsor almost advise to the event organizer um the type of event they would like to sponsor on and basically saying look if you can create an event based around this subject matter we will give you 20k to sponsor it um and so what does the event organizer then do they go off they they, they knowing that they've got a you know albeit you know essentially a you know a signed on the dotted line they then go out and create um, a, a, an event based on that um, subject matter, knowing that they then have a sponsor to um, back it up. Um, and so it's really interesting. We're seeing, a, a, I suppose you could sort of describe that as a sponsor led um, sort of topic um, uh, generation or, or, or event generation, which is really fascinating. Yeah, that's interesting. So uh, if you're thinking of doing a summit uh, and you're wondering what to do it on, you might, you might have to just go and, and speak, f seek out someone that has a need for this and, and run it for, for them. That's a, you know, another whole opportunity or channel or avenue you might want to explore. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, it does, it, obviously, you know, it depends on a lot of things. So if you're watching this, um, if your business is, you know, selling a product or you're coaching or, or something that is very specifically around a particular subject matter, you probably want to have your summit focused around that subject matter. But if you're actually trying to broaden out of it and sort of, you know, as I said, create businesses around or a business around delivering summits, then maybe you can, you might want to consider that as a strategy. Um, but, you know, still be careful, you know, don't nest literally just follow what the sponsor says. We love doing, you know, an event or we'd be happy to sponsor an event talking about three-legged frogs. Well, that's great. But if you don't know anything about three-legged three -legged frogs, or you have no idea where to find them or where to find a community that is interested in that um, area of the world, um, then it's probably not the right thing to do. So you, again, use common sense, um, but it can be a really great way of just sort of getting ideas around where the money is, where the interest is from the sponsor's um, standpoint. Yeah, I think you mentioned something earlier uh, as well that uh, you can identify these sponsors via sponsors who are sponsoring existing in-person conferences and mm. then say well hey you've got this 200 person conference over here uh, how about i do one online and i bring 2000 people uh, but you don't have to spend you know your your 50k on sponsoring uh, us that you spend on the physical conference just give us 10k instead but you're getting 10 times the amount of people i mean that's a really interesting proposition for these uh, sponsor like these companies that are out there yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, it, and it's, it is very much complementary at this stage. And I think it, 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 certainly what we're observing is that our customers are not seeing it as, a, as an opportunity to replace the offline real world events currently to complement. But I think what we'll see from next year onwards, and we'll see a much, in, much more interesting divergence of the two and many, many companies um, or tr of the traditional enterprise companies, I suppose, choosing to deliver summits online versus offline. Um, and so it's going to be an interesting um, uh, journey ahead, I think. Yeah. So uh, talking of journeys, like you've, uh, you're someone that's uh, into software and you've decided that you're going to dedicate and create a whole company off the back of uh, a summit. I mean, there's so many other opportunities out there. And we're talking about opportunities for summit. So for summit specifically, but uh, when, when I think of you and you're thinking, uh, well, I'm going to dedicate my you know, my time now to go and create uh, this company that creates and helps um, people create summits. What, what made you decide that was the opportunity you'd chase versus all the other one opportunities that are in front of you? So I'm, 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 I'm always that sort of um, founder, if you will, that, that chases based on gut or, 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 or bases decisions, those initial decisions based on, on gut. Life's too short, as far as I'm concerned, to purely chase the money. Now there is, you know, I think this is a, an emerging market. And so I think, you know, it is a, it is a market that we see 
being um, rewarding from a commercial standpoint, but that's not why we entered it in the first place. I think there are many um, business owners that will go out there and say, well, look, there's 10 competitors in that space. Um, the, 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 it's a proven model. If we can just sort of copy that feature, but just do that little tweak to make it that little bit more appealing to that particular side of the market, then we can, we can corner it. And that's fine, but that doesn't interest me in terms of what drives me. What drives me is seeing a real opportunity and creating a new, a new sort of side of the market and, and really sort of innovating in that sort of sense. And so to answer that question in a very sort of short way, I suppose it's, it's part um, seeing the opportunity, but, but a raw passion in seeing a better version of what exists today and wanting to get that out to the market and trying to create a better set of options for, for the wider um, community out there. I think there's a hell of a lot more that can be done in this space. Yeah. Well, I think this is a, like, I'm a big fan of uh, summits. I'm a big fan of people that are creating companies specifically to create better summits. Uh, so that's how I think we connected. Uh, I've been obviously uh, running summits since 2015 and, and you've come in with this new uh, solution. Uh, and so I think the way that we've, uh, we met and we decided to have discussions on what things are working and, and what not have, have really, and, and when people like, you know, you come into the industry and start uh, making it better, because I think it has been stale for, for quite some time, at least on the, on the um, at least from a year ago in terms of the, the technology and how difficult it was, you coming in and making things better and easier uh, for not just the host, but uh, a beautiful experience for attendees. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, you know, what you're doing and people like you. Yeah. And I think that's kind of also the opportunity that we see here that yes, you can go and do a, you know, even for free, you know, there's probably a template that will give you kind of like a, a summit style um, landing page and you can sort of plug it all in. But the reality is that there's not just the marketing experience. There's not just the speaker experience, the sponsor experience. There's also the attendee experience, as you mentioned there. And I think we very much see it as our job to really innovate and push the envelope in all of those areas, because that's what's needed. That's what's lacking right now. And if we can do that, then we can all deliver that far greater of a quality of, 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 of experience and for you know, revenue and, and, and everything else behind it. Um, is, you know, one thing I learned through putting the, the, the event on last year, the 100 speaker event, is that it's like anything, you know, you're, what you're essentially doing is trying to convince speakers to talk at your event and you're trying to basically tell them that they can trust that your brand is consistent with theirs, that they can trust that, that you're going to you know, uphold um, the same quality levels and, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, and a big part of that is how the platform presents them and how that's going to help them from an organizational standpoint and um, presentation and everything else as well. And so um, it's, I think it's such an important thing to, to make sure that all these things are joined up, the attendee experience, the sponsor, the speaker, the, 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 um, the, from the organizer standpoint as well, just making sure it's all joined up so that everyone benefits both on the attendee side and the, the, the company side. Um, to deliver that far greater quality of, of, of events. Yeah, I think uh, one of the common threads so far uh, with previous guests that have been on this this live stream is that the tra like uh, the trajectory of how summits uh, are going right now, and I think the popularity and the demand and interest in them have is uh, definitely on the increase. And you were talking about next year and how you you're foreseeing a big change there, and and I'd absolutely agree with that. Um, I see Martin's just asking a question in the chat. Uh, did I hear that Ben had a background in offline events? No, 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 no. Just, just that we, we've spoken to a lot of speakers, sponsors and event organizers in the last sort of year and a half. And, and many of them were ex originally or currently still doing offline and using online summits through Hay Summit um, as a way of complementing that offline. So no, I don't have direct experience other than going as an attendee from time to time. Martin's got it. Thanks, Norris. Well, Martin, just to answer your question there, you might have heard me say that I've got experience <laughs> ah, <okay>. in <laughs> offline events. Uh, so, yeah, Martin, I've uh, helped organise events uh, in the UK as well as in Australia and uh, with our virtual events as well, bringing on sponsors for those uh, from uh, big financial companies, uh, some of the major banks in the world I've brought on as sponsors. And so I know the, the different level and, and red tape of what needs to be done to bring a, bring a sponsorship on board for, for your virtual summit or your offline uh, event. 
Um, and so hopefully that answers your, your question, Martin. The two main revenue streams, I think, with the ticket sales and the, the sponsorships are, are huge. Uh, so just to ask you, uh, Ben, like if, if people are watching this and they're considering or, or thinking of, of doing a summit and actually asking, like, why should I join Virtual, Virtual Summit Academy? What would you say to them? I, I think, first of all, you know, the decision has been made to deliver a summit. I think it's then a responsibility, I think, to, to make sure that you do it in the right way. And that, that, that's partially platform. That's why, you know, what I'm talking about today. But a massive part of that is the strategy behind how you reach out to speakers, how you construct that content and think about how it's delivered separate from the, the platform, just like literally what is the strategy here and how do you go about doing it? And, and, and learning from those that have done it before. And I think that's such an important aspect. Um, it's, you know, there's only so much that tools and, and everything else can do. Having the, the learning behind it to make sure that you deliver uh, a compelling experience is, is so key. And so I would say that's a really, really important reason for, um, for, for, for looking at, into what you're, you're offering today. Um, it's, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully you're entering this to make revenue. And so, you know, you can either wing it and, um, and, and, you know, hopefully learn over time and, and iterate from summit to summit um, or, or, or stand a greater chance of, of, of really generating revenue. We, we've got, we had a customer, I think back in November that over a week did hundred K in, in revenue, um, but they'd done summits. I think this was their third in a row. Um, it's the first time they'd done it through our platform, but, but third in a row. So they were veterans in the space. They, they knew their market, they knew what they could do, but they didn't get that in the first year. It took them that time to build up the strategies to know, okay, this is how we price the tickets. This is when we sell them. This is how we send them. It's the email content and strategies and everything else behind it. Um, but the opportunity is there. And, and so I would, yeah, I think if there's education available to really up your game, to make sure that your first one is as effective as possible, I would, I would snap it up. Yeah. It's, you know, pulling things together, uh, trying to work it all out yourself. Uh, like I've done in the, with my first summit, uh, pulling all those tools together. Like why would you go through that experience when there's a, a platform uh, like yours, Ben, or there's a, a system uh, and a step-by-step -step process that you can follow to make it easy. And, it's, and we've been talking about sponsors and sponsorship uh, as part of this discussion today. And if you're bringing on board or thinking of bringing on board sponsors, you don't want to make a mistake or, you know, make a fool of yourself or do something that's going to break that relationship and, um, uh, or break that agreement you have with the, the sponsor. And then, you know, you not end up getting any of your sponsorship money because you didn't fulfill on the contract. Uh, I, it's, it's important that you do have the, the, the beautiful experience for your attendees and also making sure you deliver uh, on your promises to your sponsors by getting X amount of, people on your summit, the X amount of visibility and exposure uh, and leads for mm. them. Awesome, mate. I think this has been uh, a brilliant uh, talk uh, and I like that we dove into sponsorship here. Uh, you, you're someone that did a hundred speaker summit. So it's good to know that uh, those opportunities are out there to go and do these really big events that can really make you stand out as an expert and authority in, in your market. Really appreciate your time today, mate. Uh, and thanks so much for just uh, sharing all of that today. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, guys.